The idea and the concept of a town square has existed for as long as humans have lived in communities. And a lot of times this happened organically. There's always a center or a place to circle the wagons to light the campfire. You can see the important role that these town squares played in history with the example of the Roman Forum. It was a place to socialize, to hear the news, to make trades and commerce, and to spread, spread ideas. And here's a photo of one that I really like called San Marco's Square. This is in Venice, Italy. And you can see the activity that's happening here. There are people at cafes, there are people meeting, they're socializing, they're hanging out. And even though you don't really know what is happening here, you can feel a sense of activity in the space and you wanna be there. And this square has essentially looked the same for the last thousand years. And it's worked for them. It's a place to go and a place to be. But somewhere along the road, we stopped intentionally building these spaces into our communities, so we have to be really thoughtful about creating them ourselves. So I use a process called creative placemaking. It's a tool that community builders use to bring people together, to create places that are focused on the communal rather than the individual. And these are generally in places that aren't our primary spaces of being, which are home, school, and work. This is an alleyway where I live in Fargo, North Dakota, and it's definitely not one of the top three places that you want to spend your time in. Um, it's used for trash deliveries and smoke breaks from the neighborhood bars. But when I look at that picture, I see a music venue, and I see a public park, and a restaurant, and an art gallery, and a place to, that you want to be. I co-founded an event called Alley Fair, where we actually did all of those things in that alley. We brought in green turf that was reused from another event. We found plants that were about to be thrown away because it was the end of the season. We painted the cement with eco-friendly dyes, and we borrowed a semi-trailer for a stage. And with that, we invited the culture creators of our community, the artists, the baristas, the bartenders, the musicians, uh, the chefs, to create within that space and to see what would happen. And the result of that was an opportunity to pe for people to realize that alleyways were a space for pedestrians, for culture to flourish. And now, we live in a town where artists find their canvases in the alleyways, where there are businesses opening with alley-only entrances, and where people gather to dine in secluded spaces within our city. But creative placemaking does more than just alter a space. With the intentional creation of a space, you can change the behavior of a community. Em environments have huge impacts on our behaviors. And when you get people out of a s space that they're used to, they're forced to rely on their instincts rather than their habits. When we created the Red River Market, a new farmer's market within our town, we took the utilitarian and often unenjoyable task of grocery shopping and changed its environment. When I go into the grocery store, I have my list, I know what I'm gonna get, I'm like creeping around the aisles, avoiding eye contact with everyone else in the grocery store, um, and I get the things that I need and get out as fast as possible. There's not a lot of community building happening in the grocery store. So when we created the market, we added elements that slow people down. We have coffee from a local coffee roaster, seating and outdoor patios to invite your friends over to sit with you, and live music performances throughout the market. And what happened was that we gave a purpose for people to just be, to exist within this space. And at the market, people come, they walk down the street and select their items, and inevitably, they run into someone they know, they grab a cup of coffee, they start chatting, they sit down, and before they know it, they spent hours at the farmer's market, and they hear the closing bell ring for the end of the day. And people do this because it feels good. It follows their instincts rather than habits towards a communal and social experience. So if you want to create these spaces of your own, what should you do? I always say to start small. Think of your lowest cost and your highest impact. So on a recent trip to Paris, out of all the wonderful and amazing things there are obviously to do in Paris, one of my favorite things became sitting in this square and watching these skateboarders. Now there's nothing really distinctive about this square at all. It's the same as any other, has trees and a lot of benches, which is nice, but it's really just an open space.
But people ca gather here in hundreds to watch skateboarders and to skateboard themselves. Because they dropped off a few items that were gathered along the way, like a board, a road cone, a piece of a fence, and they turned it into a skate park. That's all they needed. And I would just sit here and enjoy the community that was created from the skateboarders, the activation that became that square. The skateboarders didn't go through a long community building workshop or go through a creative placemaking uh, process to do that. They just followed their instincts. So to show how, you can start one of these simply. We host monthly house concerts at our home where we really stick to the basics of placemaking, which is a place, something to engage with, and people to engage with it. So here's what you need to start your own house concert. You find a space, a piece of grass, probably your yard, um, a, a open space, maybe your living room, if, it, if it's winter, climate doesn't provide. Um, and then you call a musician, who is probably just your friend who plays a guitar, that's totally fine. Um, and then you pass the hat when the concert's happening, so you can pay your musician, and you can improve your event for next time. We really stick to the basics of what, what is important. The space, the engagement, and the people to engage with it. So, if your city, or the place that, you, that you're, you're in, doesn't have a San Marco Square of its own, you can look around and see what's available, see what people haven't thought of yet, and create your own. And you can turn gravel alleyways into parkways. And you can turn parking lots into festivals. Thank you.